It's time for Supply Chain Now Radio, broadcasting live from the supply chain capital of the country, Atlanta, Georgia. Supply Chain Now Radio spotlights the best in all things supply chain. The people, the technologies, the best practices, and the critical issues of the day. And now, here are your hosts. Hey, good afternoon. Scott Luton here with you live on Supply Chain Now Radio. Welcome back to the show. Of course, we're not broadcasting live today from Atlanta, but rather from the South Carolina Fall Logistics Tech Talk in Charleston, South Carolina at the Gilliard Center. Uh, we are continuing our coverage in partnership with the South Carolina Council on Competitiveness uh, at this event, which highlights some of the most innovative companies and leaders that are driving the, the logistics industry forward in the booming state of South Carolina. Uh, to our listeners, like all of our series on Supply Chain Now Radio, you can find our replays on a wide variety of channels. Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, YouTube, wherever else you get your podcasts from. As always, we'd love to have you subscribe so you don't miss anything. So uh, I want to join in or welcome in my esteemed co-host joining me once again here today on this episode, Greg White, serial supply chain tech entrepreneur and trusted advisor and board member. Greg, how are you? I am doing great. If I was any better, I would be Bo Groover. (laughs) Bo's a great friend of the show. Uh, He leads our Leadership Matters series, and and, uh, he is always doing well. Yeah, he's always doing well. (laughs) And if you're doing any better, you're Bo. That's right. (laughs) Well, we've got a great guest here today. We've been on on, on a string of um, diverse interviews yeah. that come from different aspects of the Indian supply chain community. Great event going on, kind of a backdrop here. Um, but today, let's welcome in Alan Boldick, Senior Vice President with Avis & Young. How you doing, Alan? Wonderful, thank you. You bet. And, uh, and we really enjoyed, it was a brief warm-up conversation, but we enjoyed it. Uh, and, and as Greg mentioned, you do fit right in. So um, we want to give our listeners the same opportunity that we enjoyed, which is kind of getting a sense of who you are and, and, and your, your journey that's led you to doing what you do now. So let's start there, Alan. Well, actually, before I start that, I just want to give you another, uh, Greg, a, a, an opportunity to respond differently to how you're doing. Mm. <laughs> And the reason why I want to do that is because I have a very good friend, and when he's asked that question, his response is, if I'd be doing any better, I'd have to be twins. That's, 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 what, that's where the Bo Groover reference comes from. Okay. That's what he says. If right. I was doing any better, I'd be, be twins. twins. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yep. Very fun. Kindred spirits with our friend. <laughs> yeah. 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 We need yeah. to have those two guys meet, for sure. <laughs> well, he's here in town. So, Anyway, so uh, t- uh, to get back to your question, so... Um, a little background, uh, I grew up in Hartford, Connecticut, um, uh, one of uh, four kids in a fatherless home. Uh, father passed away when I was young. Mm. Um, and uh, so inner city, um, if you can call that for a third tier city, small city, but still still a city, mm. uh, rough town uh, to some degree. Anyway, I uh, grew up, um, uh, had some challenges, you know, um, was, a, was, a, was always in trouble, you know, that kind of thing. And um, managed to uh, get through high school. Um, and uh, was uh, two weeks after high school, standing on a street corner. I'm 17 years old, um, trying to figure out, you know, what am I going to do next? Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, a bus went by, and on the side of the bus was a big thing, a big sign says, Join the Navy, see the world. Mm. And I literally uh, got on the bus and went downtown Hartford, um, got all my paperwork done. Um, had to have uh, parental signatures, so because you were 17, yeah. I was 17, so I took it on to my mother in the kitchen, and I said, "I need you to sign this." And she says to me, "What? What's that?" And I says, "Well, that's, I'm joining the Navy. Um, I need you, but I need you to sign this thing." And she looked at me and she says, "I knew this day was coming. I didn't think it'd be this soon." And immediately grabbed the paper and signed it as fast <laughs> as she could. <laughs> and that's all she wrote. And that's all she wrote. Yeah. Yeah. Literally. Literally. <laughs> yep. Gave me big hug and sent me off my way. Yeah. So where did the Navy take you? Uh, so um, obviously uh, boot camp. You know, mm-hmm. you start you start there. I went to Great Lakes in, in Chicago and uh, 
Uh, when I signed up um, at that particular time, so Vietnam was still going on, mm. and I signed up, and they had a special opportunity um, uh, that they offered, a three-year um, term, a three-year deal, and you could choose East Coast or West Coast duty. Mm. Wow. And I said, okay, well, um, I don't really want to go to Vietnam, so I'm going to take the East Coast duty. And they said, great, you're in. So I go to I go to boot camp. I come out of boot camp. They send me orders to a destroyer out of uh, Norfolk, Virginia. Wow. I said, okay, awesome, great. So I, I do a little a couple weeks leave, go down to Norfolk. First time I've ever been down down mm. south. Mm-hmm. I'm walking over the brow of the ship onto the deck, and they take me on. And the guy at the deck, you know, the, at, the first thing he says to me, so you know where we're going? Uh, where? Well, we're going to Vietnam. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's strike two. How, how's that happen? I got East Coast duty. He said, we're going through the Panama Canal. Oh, <laughs> Turns out we dug this big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So 30 days later, wow. uh, we were on route to, uh, to, to Vietnam and uh, through the Panama Canal, which was mm. my first, ex- I mean, my first experience on a ship, my first experience right. through something like the canal, um, ocean. And, you know, that's um, kind of where the connection with me and maritime yeah. and all this kind of came and so yeah. you, it, it, and then that'll grow on you as we talk a little yeah, further sure mm. um and uh so i spent uh seven months on that cruise um three months on the gun line and in, in vietnam and the gulf of tonkin and mm. and so on um and then uh they when we were done and the war was you know technically the war had uh, mm. the treaty had been signed while i was right. there so we um, hung around to do so what they call plane guarding of the carriers as they were trying to get POWs out mm-hmm. and other resources. And it was finally time for us to leave, so we're transitioning back uh, to Norfolk. And they said, uh, well, this ship is an old World War II vintage mm-hmm. ship. We're decommissioning it uh, upon arrival. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have an opportunity to, to do whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. And so I put in papers to become a, a signalman, um, which is what my father had done when he was in the service. Mm-hmm. So it was just something that you know, struck me. And, wow. and so and that was, I continued my career. So I spent seven years in the Navy um, on uh, three different ships and a piece of shore duty. And would have stayed, but uh, circumstances um, uh, gave me the chance to to, to leave, yeah. and I went on to my second career, which is what got you in industry, right? So no, no, no. I'm getting uh, ahead. Of, I'm reading the next chapters. Yes, yes. So I had three <laughs> careers. So okay. so Navy was the first one. Uh, the second one, um, I ended up. Uh, uh, I won't bore you with all the details, but I ended up um, getting a job in in sales. Um, because it offered me flexibility. I became a single parent, um, so it offered me some flexibility and some unlimited uh, opportunities at the Mm. same time. And a a gentleman convinced me that uh, that was the place to go. Um, So I got into sales and then ended up into computer sales and computer time-sharing sales. Mm. You see where we're going here? I got into telecommunication sales um, and progressed uh, for a number of years uh, uh, selling services, IBM system services, Mm -hmm. and then into telephone equipment and network and ended up at Sprint um, doing national accounts. Um, so I did a lot of that and then I got uh, tapped into the dot-com world and the DSL technology world uh, back in the, uh, in the uh, early 90s and uh, was asked to um, be a part of a startup company in the, in the DSL world and infrastructure of laying fiber in mm. metropolitan areas. Uh, so I did that for a couple of years. Um, that company was acquired the same day as MCI was acquired by a company called WorldCom. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so I got absorbed up into that. Mm. Um, didn't really like the WorldCom philosophy. And I was more of an entrepreneur. A lot of people didn't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Turns out you were pretty <laughs> insightful. And I'm really an entrepreneurial spirit. I don't yeah. Particularly care for the big corporate stuff. So um, uh, a guy that I had recruited into the business went out and started another one. So he came and got me, and I went to uh, to work with him as employee number six. And in the next 18 months, we went from six employees to 600 um, uh, nationwide service. Uh, I was the executive operations uh, guy. Went public, mm. um, and then uh, and then the dot com world imploded. Right, and um, so. Part of my responsibility at that point, along with everything else, was all the real estate holdings that the company had mm. grown to, to have and manage. And uh, so when I left there, 
and got out of that business, I had to reinvent myself. And I said one day, you know, after a while, I said, you know, the thing I enjoyed the most was the real estate stuff. And that's how I got into the hmm. real estate business. Hmm. And that's and so you went from there to Avis and Young. No, I went from there. <laughs> I'm going to quit trying to guess your <laughs> but, history. <laughs> but but I'm but now I'm in real estate. Yeah, yes, so that's, yeah, yeah, so that's, my, that's the career. Yeah, right. So that's yeah. the next career. But um, I started with a little with a with a company that didn't really provide me any resources. Uh, uh, an ex client of mine said, "Hey, who was in a real estate business?" Said, "Come join me." I'll make you a partner with my other partner. We'll be a team of three. I'll teach you the business, and I'll feed you while I'm teaching you, right? Because mm. that's part of the problem with getting into this right. business. Um, and I did that with them for five years, a little boutique firm in, in uh, uh, Hartford, Connecticut, mm-hmm. called Century Commercial Real Estate. And um, I did that for five years, and then the, one of the partners was retiring. The other partner was really focusing on corporate. Mm. I really like to be entrepreneurial, so we decided to disband the team. Um, and at that point, there was no, not enough value for me mm. to stay. So I, I created my own company uh, as a one-man show and went off on my own. Mm. Did that for um, about eight years, uh, 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 roughly. Two years, three years, uh, three years, four, maybe five years in Connecticut um, before I transitioned here. Mm. And, and restarted it here. Mm, mm, very cool. Yeah. So I came here to Charleston, um, had to reinvent myself, even though I was going to still do industrial real estate, um, because I didn't know anything about a port or logistics. I mean, because that's not what we do in Connecticut, right? right. Just, they, there's nothing there. So um, I went to the College of Charleston. They had an intermodal professional development course, uh, which was 10 months long. Um, I took that course. I, um, I did, so I accomplished two things in that course. One is I learned all the acronyms and the insight into rail, shipping, customs, maritime law. Um, I mean, you name it, yeah. associated with the business, warehousing. Um, but more importantly is all of the people presenting mm. all those segments mm. were people from the current marketplace that were executives in their own yes. fields mm. uh, and experts. And so I created those relationships um, from there. And then uh, I did that for some time on my own still, but the market was growing, uh, getting bigger, Mm -hmm. becoming more and more demanding. And as a one person shop, it gets pretty hard Mm. uh, to do all things. And so I had to make a decision, either I'm gonna grow my own company again and start from scratch and hire people, Mm. or I'm gonna go find an, an, an organization, an entity that's existing that needs what I've got to offer and and has the support that I'm looking for. Mm. And that's when I joined Davis and Young. Mm. That's great. And And, and, and how how long ago was that? Six years. Okay. Yep. And so now you're deeply involved in uh, real estate from an industrial side, from a a maritime side, from a warehousing distribution side. Is that correct? That's correct. So at Avis and Young, um, uh, I've done a couple of things. One is I focus on maritime um, and logistics. Uh, I went to Jim Newsom, the, the CEO of the port. He, I was new here. He was new here. We hear that name a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. And I said to him, I said, um, you know, you don't have any cold storage here. It seems mm. to me like a port would want to have cold storage. And he looked at me and he said, um, that's where I'd put my money. That's that's what we need. And he said, go talk to Paul McClintock and 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 see if there's something you can do with him. So I went and I saw Paul and I said, Paul, you know, uh, Jim says, you know, you need cold storage. How can I help you? He says, here's the deal. If you can find an operator, we'll host them. You bring them, we'll host them. We've got the, we've got the, the, the product. We need the operator. Hmm. And we don't know who they are. Hmm. And so if you, can, if you can connect those dots for us, you'll be part of the team and we'll, we'll work through this. And so I went out and I pounded the pavement and I, and I, I won't go through all the hmm. uh, elaborate uh, research, but ultimately I brought a number of, of opportunities uh, to the port, hmm. one stuck, and we built the building, and uh, and now they're in expansion mode. And, wow. and, Outstanding. Uh, so that was my beginning of working with the port um, and learning more about the in- intricacies of, of mm. doing that. Um, so since then, um, with Avis and Young, I've um, focused on doing uh, logistics and maritime and getting really involved. So I got involved with an organization called the Propeller Club, 
which is an international organization. It's kind of like Rotary for the maritime world, mm. okay. if, for lack of a better term. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, sure. And uh, worked my way up and to be a, a board member uh, of that organization, mm -hmm. uh, gained some credibility with the marketplace and the maritime. Uh, today, I sit on the board of the Maritime Association of South Carolina. Mm. Um, and uh, the board of the Chamber of Commerce here in, in, in Charleston. And so I've managed to, uh, you know, raise my level of, of cre credentials and, and credibility within, within the, uh, the, the market. Mm. Avis and Young uh, locally uh, has a managing director who asked me to lead the industrial practice for Avis and Young um, for the state of South Carolina. So we have an office in Greenville. Mm. We recently off opened an office in Savannah. And so I'm assisting uh, three teams um, uh, covering basically industrial, warehouse, mm. um, trucking, et cetera. Um, but I spend most of my day on committee work mm -hmm. <laughs> and, supporting, uh, and supporting the market, which is why I'm here. Yeah. Uh, I actually spent several years on the board of the International Trade Conference and uh, recently came off of, of, of that. Outstanding. Yeah. So you can get a little sleep at night now. I, well, a little. I don't know. I got other committees and stuff. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we're all busy. Well, you, 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 but you immerse yourself. I think special people, yeah. special leaders like yourself, immerse yourself in the industry. So it's not just about the transaction that drives revenue. It's about relationships. Yeah, relationships. Giving back. Yes. Yeah. Participation. Uh, the relationships. Growing the whole pie. Really. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the people that I've met. Um, you know, it's one thing to drop yourself into a room and think you're going to get a deal done when you don't know anybody. It's another mm -hmm. thing when you're, when you're in the room every day, every day, every day, and you're providing services, you're working on committees, you're involved, you're communicating, and you're not asking them for anything. Mm -hmm. You're just there to support. Yep. And then o over, over time, you build that level of relationship with people that you can call because they're going to answer the phone when you call. That's a nice right. thing. And they, they reach out to you. They look out for you. They mm -hmm. look, look they, and they do look to you for your expertise mm. um, and we've done very very well and and since I've done all that I've created a, a team um, so just like I needed Avis and Young as a group and support mm -hmm. I've now created my own industrial team mm -hmm. uh, within Avis and Young in Charleston uh, two young ladies that I'm mentoring um, that I've created as partners and I'm bringing them along and they themselves are, are immersed now in maritime and mm. getting great recognition. And one of them's quite a photographer. We saw One of them already. is quite a frog. Yeah. yeah, she's, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Well, so so uh, let's go a little bit broader. So okay. I'm, I'm gonna get you to weigh in on uh, the, the industry as a whole the, in, in the end supply chain and all the things that go on with that. Yeah. It, it, what do you think of trends or, or news or developments in that global space? What's on your radar more than other things right now? Uh, so on a global perspective, the trade uh, wars uh, tariffs is really uh, top of mind. And, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll tell you why, because one, one of the things that I'm also involved with and our team is focused on is foreign direct investment mm -hmm. um, and bringing uh, new companies here. And for the last several years, um, we had been hosting and, um, and recruiting um, industries from Europe and China and elsewhere to set up shop. And, and, and we're, um, so we're not all things to all people, but we, we want to be their eyes, ears, and their feet on the ground here mm -hmm. to explain to them what's going on and why they should be here. And then we get compensated by you know, finding them the right site, the right building, mm -hmm. whatever it is that they need um, mm -hmm. to set up shop. Uh, but we work very, very closely with uh, the local uh, economic development people at the county level, um, at the alliance level, in this particular case, uh, uh, CRDA, which is here, um, and, uh, and commerce. So we've gotten very close with all those folks mm -hmm. so that we are another resource for them. And sometimes they actually call us for, you know, for help. To, right. can, you, can you handle this? So um, when you go back to December of 2018 when the tariff wars really kind of kicked off um, it immediately stopped um, most of the foreign direct investment coming into the Charleston area and uh, predominantly um, German mm. um, so uh, the German faction is they don't like uncertainty mm -hmm. right they don't care what it is but they don't like uncertainty right or wrong right or wrong be certain yes yes so um, we've had to uh, go back to the pipeline and work on domestic projects. Um, and we've also had to go out and recruit outside of that area. So we're doing a little bit in the UK. We just had uh, one of my 
uh, business associates was in was in the UK and actually recruited a, a manufacturer. They came and they visited. They're coming back. Looks like we've got an opportunity uh, to get them here. We've got one from Dublin. We've got one from uh, India that are less impacted by the tariff issues. Um, but our concerns are that there's this huge pent-up demand that's growing, and the sooner it's released, the better for so many different reasons. Right. But if it doesn't get done sooner, it just leaves the door open for something else to impact it that may never let it come. Right. Right. So timing is everything. So that's the thing that keeps us awake at night is is that that single piece. Mm. And then in a, in addition to that is what happens when the floodgate does open mm. is like. Okay, crap. Do we have everything we need? Do we right. have enough space? Do we have the right buildings? Do we even have the capacity to process all of this? Exactly right. Yeah. And so that's the next piece that we're trying to convince people. We need to develop more product. We need to develop the better product that especially the Germans are going to be mm. interested in because that's predominantly who's coming because they're mostly the automotive and aerospace guys. They're mostly 20,000, 30,000 square foot users. Mm. They want to put their foot in the, in the door. You know, not, 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 they don't want to be all in, mm -hmm. but it's a huge capital investment. So, you know, they're not coming to build, you know, $20 million buildings. They want to come and get in here and get into business. Mm. And uh, we don't have a lot of product that supports that. Mm. Yeah. So, so, nope, you go first. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys are good. You guys are we good. try. <laughs> so clearly, uh, you can speak to, uh, from a number of different angles in this industry, right? Yeah. Yes. And, and uh, you can tell how involved you are across the the, uh, the policy making to the networking to the uh, resources to the sheer expertise of standing up these facilities, also, but also making the business deals happen. Yes. Which is not easy. So how can our listeners? Alan, get in touch with you to, to tap into some of your expertise or just to follow up on some of the things you're, you're talking about. Sure. Uh, well, I certainly have a, a LinkedIn account that's pretty active um, and probably has a, a good uh, sampling of my resume uh, on there. Um, and so if you get the right spelling, you know, A-L-A-N-B-O-L-D-U-C. Um, on LinkedIn, um, I'm on Twitter at Alan Bolduck. Um, that's kind of the extent of my mm. social media. Smart. Um, <laughs> Smart. <laughs> yeah. My partners are much younger than I am, and they've got other other avenues. Um, I stay out of that. Uh, obviously, we have an Avis and Young uh, website, so avisandyoung.com. And if you do backslash Charleston, you know you can you can find us um, and uh, our properties and whatever that we do. Sure. That's great. Yep. And we'll make sure we include your hyperlinks to the company site and your LinkedIn site in the, in the uh, show notes of the episode. So awesome. make it easy for folks to find you. Well, you know, we're not doing it justice, uh, but in the snippet of time we had, I really appreciate uh, your story and your background, but also that the, you got such a, a strong entrepreneurial uh, common thread throughout your journey and I think inspires other folks. Well, I think that one of the advantages I have with dealing with my clients um, is the fact that I know how business decisions are made. And I know where there's risk and where there's not risk because I've been in those seats. I've run million, $100 million mm -hmm. companies, so I get it. Um, and then I, so I just bring that in their best interest. Yeah. Right? And so I provide them good guidance. It's not about me. Mm -hmm. It's all about them. It's not about the transaction. It's about making sure that they're getting uh, comfortable with what their decision is. Yeah. That comes through loud and clear. Great. Yep. Thanks, clear. guys. Really appreciate your time. Alan Bolduck. Uh, Bolduck. Uh, Senior Vice President with Avis and Young. Uh, thanks again for your time, a Carbon Timeout today. Uh, Greg, another great show. Yeah. A couple more to go. Yeah. Uh, to our listeners, stay tuned as we continue our coverage of the 2019 South Carolina Fall Logistics Tech Talk event. Of course, be sure to check us out on all the different podcast channels from Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, YouTube, really wherever else you get your podcast from. Of course, learn a lot more about past episodes, upcoming events, you name it, at supplychainnowradio.com. On behalf of Greg White and Scott Luton, have a wonderful afternoon, and we will see you next time on Supply Chain Now Radio. Thanks, everybody.